impact on the groundwater is remote in the extreme. The biggest. Oh, that is a joke. No, no. That, that's the science. That's the science. And anybody who wants to debate me on that, I'll take you up anytime in any forum. Okay. That's the science. You can you can talk about anecdotal stories and rumors and innuendo. The science is that groundwater is not affected by the Marcellus shale. Now, if you want to suspend the laws of gravity and other other laws of physics, you can. That's the only way you have that impact. I do not believe this is a good lease. Basically, it gives the um, broker, and it is a broker, not a producer. Uh, a free ride for six months. They will go out and try to sell this. If they can sell it at a higher seconds, if they can sell it at a higher rate than they're paying us, they'll do it. Otherwise, they'll probably walk away from it. There are a number of other terms. Five years without a drilling up the bowl, and I think that there are other opportunities. There will be other opportunities out there for the Marcellus Shell development on this property. Of course, we will tremendous potential for the region. However, I would agree with the gentleman. I would not sign this lease. Something fishy about 30 days. I don't think anybody would sign any kind of thing that was you know, put the arms like that. Um, I have a question. Uh, this thing about six dollars per resident keeps floating around. And if we do the math, six times three hundred. I don't know what. Here's the question. Uh, it's a clarification. Fifteen percent of the deep well production. What are they projecting the deep well to produce? Do you have any idea? And what are we talking about here in terms of? Revenue potential for the municipality. Are they prospecting? Um, so no, no, no discussion came. We have some numbers from what we're projecting the range. Um, it was in the in the approximate area. Depending, you have to assume a certain level of production. So it's hard to throw out numbers. But we were thinking it was going to be conservatively in the area of about twenty-five thousand dollars a month. Right. That's for 25 or 30 years. Okay. Right. And uh, well, I'd like it to stay uh, just a park rather than a business or something that people can make a profit from. Other people. If we're already having enough money to, to run the park, isn't there another way? And like the man said, maybe this isn't the time. Maybe in the future there'll be something else that will come up. <coughs> right now I'm 100% against it. And I'm going to be retired soon. I don't know anything about this type of an activity, but if this goes through, I'm going to dedicate the rest of my life to becoming involved in more political things in my neighborhood. Thank you. Yep. Brian Glass, I live at 8 Penhurst Road. We sort of glossed over the, um, the, the uh, technology involved with the um, drilling here with specifically hydraulic fracturing. What they're talking about, the reason they want the park acreage is they can horizontal directional drill underneath the park acreage, pump drilling fluids under there, and hydraulically fracture the shale rock. So there is going to be drilling under the park ground. Well, the reason I bring this up is a, a question for the authority and a question for the borough. Has any risk assessment been done on the possible release of drilling fluids into the waters of the creek? And there should be, okay? And I'll ask a question to Mr. Vogel. Have you done a legal review of the lease and possible legal risks involved with the drilling operations under the uh, park acreage? I haven't. Uh, I just left the lease uh, uh, this past week, and we did an overview of it. One question I would have to um, means is if we do, uh, if this lease uh, is enacted, does that affect our funding for parking in the way? Okay. Does it well, the taxation? The reason I bring this up is the question for environmental liability. There are federal statutes, particularly the um, CERCLA law, which is the uh, Comprehensive Environmental Reclamation, Compensation, and Liability Act, which will hold a landowner liable for drilling activity for the release of hazardous materials such as drilling fluids into waterways. So if the fluids that they're using are released into the water of the creek, the authority, and I'm going to ask you, Mr. Vogel, would the borough be possibly liable for that? Would be possibly Okay, liable. so in Quaker State, the U.S. Coast Guard, 1988, Western District of Pennsylvania, the landowner 
was held liable for the paying the cost of the Coast Guard's cleanup of the site. So I just ask you to go back and take a look at that. Thank you. Bill Penrod, Banbury Lane. I don't have a problem with them drilling. If they're going to drill on the properties beside ours and suck all the suck all of it out, what, what, what difference does it make to us? We're losing our opportunity. I don't know about the lease, but I say if, it, if we can get through the lease, I'm, I'm all for drilling. If it had not been for that Post Gazette article, I do not think that we would be here tonight. I don't know what would happen. I just asked the, my council to vote no so that we have time to look at this, to uh, maybe get, I think that best practices would say at least three bids, and, and allow us to get experts in here and to talk and so that we can all give us our opinion. Maybe this is the best idea in the world, but I want time. And I want to not have <coughs> my council rush in to anything. Thank you. I'm Anna Bryce. I live on Devon Lane. I went to the meeting on the 7th of April, the approval meeting. It is my understanding that when asked, the solicitor said he didn't know mineral rights under the park. That needs to be clarified. If the park does not own the mineral rights, the money that we get will be not all that significant. I'm going to assume this is the case of the good people making bad decisions, because bad decisions have spiral into a, a, a loss of public trust in the board, and that's a real shame. Um, it didn't have to be that way. Number two, there is a misalignment of mission. The Avonworth Community Park mission is to offer a safe and fun place for the public of the surrounding communities to gather. Okay, so is the park in financial distress that would threaten the mission? Not according to the authorities on board now. Um, she stated yesterday there was no financial distress. There are community, there are capital projects, um, but they are not pressing. They are not going to affect the mission. And if there were if there is a financial issue, I would ask what other options were considered and rejected. What was the process that led to this being the final best decision on how to address the revenue shortfall? This is for a land broker. It's a very different agenda than offering a safe and fun place for the public. I would suggest that, like any board, the authority needs to align its actions with the park mission. That is the cornerstone of the board's activities. The Marinick Center is what is bringing in funds. If we did not have those funds, correct me if I'm wrong, we would not be able to operate that park, nor would the pool be able to operate because of the low cost that we collect from the, from the community <coughs> as well as the amount of money it takes to run it. I'm for, I'm for drilling. I, it, it is, it, I'm maybe not for the actual lease that's in place. I've listened to some very well-informed experts on these leases, and I, I don't know if I agree with it, but I'm for drilling because the park, it's not going to get federal funds. It's not going to get red money. I'm concerned about that, and I'm, I'm for it. Thank you. My, I'm Betsy Radcliffe, and I live on Wilson. My comments are going to be very brief. I'm also for the drilling um, against the lease, and just as a matter of procedure here tonight, because not everybody is going to be able to speak. Before it's all said and done, if you'll just do a hand up or down of the residents here, just to give you an idea of how many are in favor of this lease, because I think that's the issue right now. We could discuss the pros and cons of Marcella Shale all night long, and and all of us need to be all of us need to be better educated about that. We don't know the lease. I've never I haven't seen the lease, but I trust the people that have looked at the lease, and if they're saying there's some areas of fuzziness and there's no urgency, I would say, hold off, please. And what I've, what I've heard is a lot of talk about hydraulic fracturing being a problem and uh, having water supplies and things like that. And I just want to point out that I brought essentially 20 pages of letters 
written on state letterhead from the environmental departments, and every single one of these said that there was not a single case of contamination from hydraulic fracturing. From hydraulic fracturing, you get to keep straight, hydraulic fracturing is different from releases at the surface and casing leases. Hydraulic fracturing occurs six thousand here that shows results of micro seismic studies on a hydraulic fracturing system. It shows the extent of vertical fracturing from the horizontal bore is only about a thousand feet. So we're still five or six thousand feet below ground. There's no way that contamination is gonna, gonna come up from the horizontal bore five or six thousand feet down. It just doesn't happen. On the other hand, what you need to be concerned about is, is releases at the surface from improperly cemented casings and impoundments. Okay? So please keep in mind that hydraulic fracturing is completely different from releases at the surface. Just let me say, I am highly in sympathy with the sentiments of Mr. Hutt. I, my family is involved in the cellus operations from field to end all the way up. And I have friends that are also involved. Uh, just, I want to, I was going to say certain things that I've already put on a, 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 a paper here. But let me tell you very quickly. Number one, it's not like a milkshake. It's not going to get sucked out from one end to the other. This is Marcellus. Marcellus generally is not what's called a fugacious. It doesn't flee the rock. It doesn't flow around. That's the whole idea of fracking. My, my brother was a, an MWD guy. He does measure while drilling. He's actually aiming at that. The way they do it is the geologist takes a piece of land, and what he does is he figures out when he get when the fracking is done, and that's explosive charges, when they're done, the fissures, how far out will they go? He puts the he puts the, the well uh, uh, I guess the well what you call the well, the tubes. He makes sure they're drilled so that the fracking will hit the boundaries. Now you know, there might be some little mistake. He might not do it well enough or he might get you know, a couple thousand cubic feet more or but there could be a fish. I can't say it's impossible. We don't have to really worry about that. That's why they're leasing. They want to lease. They don't want to just go to the size of the suck over gas. This is like spinning clock. This is like Texas. I do not know why in the world would they do that. They didn't have their benefit. It's a detriment. Secondly, I don't think the primary concern in this room, I believe, is environmental issues. The identification of the lease can be a very meaningless clause. There's all kinds of identification of the lease. Uh, the board needed to have a, a oil and gas expert in leases. And then the board needed to get an opinion, a legal opinion, how this proposed lease would work for the community. Now, the community is entitled to see that legal opinion. An attorney with, a, with their appropriate expertise and his firm is standing behind what they're saying, how these things will operate. And none of us can know how the lease will operate quite frankly, without a proper expert analyzing for the community. Uh, uh, thirdly, um, uh, the, the lease itself, you obviously can negotiate and bid for the best thing possible, bring in as many people as possible. Uh, I would encourage you very strongly to uh, reject this lease proposal today and go through what I would call a more proper process to ensure that you really are intelligent about this when you make a final vote. Bush to authorize the Avonworth Municipal Authority to enter into a lease of oil and gas at the Court Park with USA Energy LLC. Okay, who wants to make that motion? <coughs> Second move. All right, we have a uh, motion. We have a second on the motion. Okay, we have a second. Now we get to, technically we have to go to discussion. Is there any discussion on the motion? No further discussion. I will, I would like to take a roll call vote. We'll go down line. Rick? Nay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>